Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord one more big hand clap. Turn to the person next to you, tell them, get ready. Now turn to the other person next to you, tell them, you get ready too. Now tell the other one behind you, I'm getting ready. We got to get ready because Jesus is coming. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Oh, come on now. I don't know about you, but that, that's what the scriptures say, that Jesus is coming back. Amen? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And if you get your Bible, go with me to the book of Nehemiah. We're going to continue what we've been talking about, the, the will to work. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1 down to verse 18. And as you're finding uh, on that scripture, uh, this morning it's good to have Brother James Garcia all the way from Miami, Florida. With us this morning. We got the Florida connection here, amen? This whole family is here. Uh, Carla, Carlita, Gio, and it's always a, good to see him. But I want him to come up and give a blast <laughs> what God is doing in his life. He's a young man, a young teacher. And uh, I want him just to share very quickly what God is doing in his life. This is Brother James. Hey, Amen. How many of you guys are excited tonight? Hey. Merry Christmas. How many of you guys spend it well with your family? You guys enjoy Christmas? And it's always awesome to be here with you guys, always sharing, saying hi to everybody. I miss you guys. Um, something Pastor just told me to share briefly what God has been doing in my life and something God's been doing in my life has been delivering me, setting me free. Because how many of you guys know that your walk with God is not a one-time deliverance? It's a constant deliverance every day. There's things in our life that we carry that we don't want to get rid of. We don't want to let go. And that causes us to repeat the same problems, to repeat the same issues. This year, I'm expecting God to do something different. And I said, God, you know what? I have to let go of old mindsets. I have to let go of soul ties. I have to let go of old things because 2016, I can, it cannot be the same as 2015. I said, 2016 has to be different. And if you realize, God never brings you into a new season until you change your heart. Yeah. Because you're not ready for it. Yeah. You're not ready for the new blessing because you're still thinking the same way you were thinking before. Amen. So and where are the young people out today? Where are the young people? Where are the young people? Amen. Let me tell you, we are living in times, like Pastor was saying, Jesus is coming back soon. And we're seeing it. 2016 has been prophesied to be one of the, one of the years where many deaths will occur in America. Many deaths, like what happened in San Bernardino, it's going to become a common thing. It's been prophesied by many prophets now in these end times. 2016 is going to be a year where you're going to see a lot of people dying. And you know who the devil's attacking the most? Are the young people. Because they are the next generation. They're the ones who are rising up. They're the ones who are lifting up. They're the ones God is using. I'm not saying God can't use you. I'm saying God is using the young people. Where are the young people? See, you don't have to wait until you're 20. You don't have to wait until you're 30, 40, 50, 60. Give your life to God now. That way he can use you. See, a lot of times we wait until the end. We wait until we can barely walk. You're so old and you're like, God, I surrender. That's great. Glory to God. But God wants you now because he wants to use you the way you are. That way he can bless you and he'll make you a living. Testimony. That's why when I stand, I say, you know what? I've been serving God since I was, I don't know, 12 years old, and I give Him glory because I'm not dead. I give Him honor because I'm not depressed. I'm not bound. I know where I'm going. I know what God has done in my life. So, young people, how many young people are going to rise up and say, God, I'm going to give my life to you at my age? I'm going to give my life. I don't care about 13, 12, 11, 10. I'm going to give my life to you because I know you're going to use me. Amen. 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 So, God bless you. It's awesome to see you. I love you guys. Hey, amen. Come on now. Some of the young guns. Young fire. Can I hear an amen? Awesome, man. Keep Brother James in prayer as he's over there in Miami. He's involved in a ministry out there and he, he's actively involved in it. God's just working in his life, man. He's going to be a powerful preacher for God. Can I hear me? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, but I'm one of those old guys. <laughs> they can move, um, 
Nehemiah chapter 4, when you have it, say it, have it. Let me read verse 1 to, down to verse 18. And we're going to just conclude this this morning. The Bible says, when Samuel heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Verse 3, Tobiah the Ammonite, who is at his side, said, we always have that guy on the side giving us two cents. That's this, that's this guy right here, Tobiah. <laughs> he said, what are they building? Even a fox climbing up on it would break down the wall of stones. And then, and then Nehemiah begins to pray in verse 4. He says, hear us, O God, <clears throat> for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in the, a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sin from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. Verse 6. So we rebuild the wall till all of it reach half its height. For the people worked with all their heart. With all their heart. But when Sambalat, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod, Heard that the repairs to Jerusalem walls had gone ahead and the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. Look to your neighbor, they look very angry. Okay. Verse 8. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. Verse 9. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Verse 10. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is given out, and there is much trouble that we cannot build, rebuild the wall. Also, our enemy said, before they know it or see, it, see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Verse 12, then, then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families, with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to its own work. From that day on, Half of the men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind the people of Judah, who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. I gotta read that part one more time. Those who carried the materials, the building materials, did their work with one hand and held a weapon with the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, God. I pray, Lord, that your will would be done. I pray, God, that you would speak to every heart that is here today. Father, let every distraction be removed out of our minds and thoughts, Lord, that don't even pretend to, pretend to you, God. Let our minds be clear and our hearts be focused on you. I pray, God, that you would move in such a way this morning that would be life-changing. Do miracles, God, inwardly and outwardly of our lives. Help us, God, to continue to, to put our hands to the plow and to accomplish all that you have for our life. We just thank you this morning, and we be careful to give you all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. And amen. And this morning, I'm not going to be too long, but just long enough because I know that everybody's under the influence of tamales and, and menudo and all that good stuff that you had for Christmas. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Thank God you made it this morning. Amen? amen. And, but this morning, I just want to reflect a little bit back on what we've been talking about on the will to work, about resetting our will to work. That God has called all of us, He pulled us out of a life of darkness and a life that, that had no guidance and direction, but he gave us a new life with a new meaning. And 
There's a task that has been laid before each and one of us. And here we find in Nehemiah a powerful story of, 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 of a people that were not a people, <clears throat> but a people that responded to the call of God, and they recognized the need within their city, and they began to rebuild this powerful, powerful city of Jerusalem. And it took people that were coming together. But we've been talking about <clears throat> the will to work all month, but tonight I want to just put it all together in a nutshell. What they were actually doing is they were building, guarding, and growing. What I'm going to talk about this morning is building, guarding, and growing. Building, guarding, and growing. With the will to work, we've got to understand, we've got to learn how to build. And we find here that the Bible says in verse 6, and that's scripture, so we rebuilt the wall till it reached half of its height, for the people worked at it with all their heart. Here they see them exercising the, this principle of building. It's good that God saves us and God pulls us out of a life that, that is, you know, really devastated to us first and to the ones that we love. But it, it doesn't stop there. God wants to build us up into the people of God that he called us to be. There's a building that takes place, a rebuilding. And the way that building within our hearts and within our lives are effective is when we build it with all of our heart. That when we're in the things of God, we got to understand that, that, that we got to do it with all our heart. Turn to your neighbor and say, we got to do it with all our heart. We can't half-heartedly allow God to, to, to re rebuild us into the people of God that God called us to do. And when you think about building, what they did is, when you think about building, there's two ways that we build. That, there's a lot of ways, but there's two ways that we build that I'm going to talk about this morning. Is first of all with our words. Did you know that with our words we, we build ourselves because our words come from our thoughts and our meditation and our words build other people. Our words not only build ourselves, the way you look at yourself and your self-image and the way that you perceive yourself and the words that you use to describe your own self because everybody has a uh, you know, inside within their heart, ho how you think you are, and the words that you use to build that, who you are. Our words are very important. We build with our words. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That when we begin to build it, as we're building what God, this temple that God has called us to, to, to that he had put us over, we got to learn to use the right words. Because I know where we came from. And I know the words that we used to use, you know, and then, oh, hey, stupid old, and uh, mental, you know what I'm talking about, and, uh, don't fall, you know. And we, we, we use words, uh, uh, and, you know, Thinking that it's not going to be, it's not going to affect anybody, but it is. As we begin to build, and as we're willing to work, and we're allowing God to rebuild us, and, and as we view ourselves, and as we view other people, we got to use words that are going to build, that are going to build people up, not tear people down. We got to learn to, to change our vocabulary. How many know that when we came to the Lord, that our vocabulary was all messed up? A lot of times we get saved in our heart, but our vocabulary doesn't get saved. And every other word is blank, and blank, 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 blank. And then another blank, blank over here. And a blank, blank over there. <clears throat> we need to understand our words are, are very important on the wording that we use. We build up ourselves, first of all, with the words that we speak to ourselves. Because all of us speak to ourselves. Did you know that? I know some of you ain't speaking to yourself. You're mad at yourself right now, but it's okay. <laughs> you get over it. Because you, know, you got to live with that person anyway. You better learn to get along. <clears throat> but, but all of us speak to ourselves. We speak words to ourselves. And a lot of times, uh, uh, when we come into the things of God, when God has to restore your self-image and the way he restores that, you begin to speak well of yourself. Not because you're so into yourself, but because God speaks well of you. 
The Bible says that God loves us and that we're wonderfully made, that He formed us and knit us together while we were in our mother's womb. And inside of us, there's a treasure. There's, there's God's grace, there's God's glory, God's presence. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Yeah. And so we got to learn to speak to ourselves good. A lot of times, God's trying to build you up when us ourselves are tearing ourselves down. And then when it's time to work or time to labor in the house of God, we ain't got no time for that because we're being tormented by ourselves. We're there in our little bubble, in ourselves, thinking, oh, poor me, I can't do anything. I'm all messed up. I'm tore up. And we get caught, so wrapped up in ourselves and caught up in ourselves, we're ineffective when it comes time to laboring for God or to working for the kingdom of God. So we got to use our words to build ourselves up. Come on, Pastor. We got to use our words to build ourselves up. We got to learn to to view ourselves the way that God views us. That that, that 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 song that we sing, He's a good good Father. Amen. That's who He is. That's who He is. Amen. That's who He is. Amen. 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 And then what what is our part? And I'm loved by Him. Amen. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. That we're loved by God. And if we're loved by God, that means God has thoughts towards us that are, man, the Bible says that you could go to the seashore where the sand's at and cut all the grains of sand and God thinks about you more than what all those about too every day. And they're not bad thoughts. He's not looking at you, there she goes again, or there he goes again. Oh my God, he's just too much. I, I can't handle it, God. God's not over there. Uh, hey, angels, come on, check this out, man. Look at that. I told you. There he goes again. Do, 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 do. Yeah. The thoughts that he has towards us are good. God has good thoughts towards us. So we got to use our words, and when we speak to ourselves, we got to build ourselves up. Then when you learn to build yourself up and you're right with, with God and you're, you're feeling, you know, that, that, that God loves you regardless of how we are, then you're able to speak words that will build up other people. Because when you don't allow God to restore your image, like James was saying in that process, then you're damaged and you're there and you can't speak good to people because hurt people hurt people. <coughs> Can I hear an Amen. amen. I just pray that I can finish this sermon because my throat is kind of messed up. Our words build, and then not only that, but our, we build with our hands. The Bible says there in verse 17, who were building the wall, who carried materials, did their work with one hand, and held the weapon with the other. It's with our hands we build. What we put our hands to, because the Bible says uh, we bless things with our hands. Can I hear an amen, somebody? That God will bless the the labor of our hands. So we build by with words and what we put our hands to, what we get involved in. Our hands represent what we get involved in, in the things of God and the kingdom of God. Building our marriage and building our home and building our kids and and doing everything we can to 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 see God in all areas of our life. By building with our hands. So building. That's what they're doing. And, and, and here in the work. <clears throat> the second thing they were doing. That was guarding. The Bible says in verse 9. Once the adversary came. And the opposition rose up. Because they were trying to advance. The enemy was there. So they had to learn to guard. What they were building. They had to learn how to guard. What God was doing. We gotta learn how to guard what God is doing in our life. Yes. You gotta guard it. Yeah. You gotta protect it. Because it's precious, man, yeah. what God is doing within your life. Amen. It's a miracle that you're here in, in church on a Sunday morning after a holiday season and here because you want God. It's a miracle. It's a miracle that your wife or your husband is sitting next to you and you guys ain't fighting. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Amen. It's a miracle that your kids, uh, they're, they're, they're you know, on their right mind and you're doing the best you can to guide them. Yeah. You got to guard what God is doing. Yes. You can't take it lightly. That's right. You can't take it lightly. You can't, you know, I know at the beginning when God does something fresh, <clears throat> when God does something new, everybody gets excited and, and, and it's, the, it's, the, it's, a, it's a conversation, it's the topic of the talk at that time, but as time goes by, then we kind of let it just simmer away. And we, when you let it go, you lose it. 
We got to guard what God is doing. We got to guard our salvation. We don't have to be here today. We got to guard the grace of God that God has given each and one of us. We got to guard God's love. We got to guard the call of God on our life and the purpose that God has designed just for you in your life. You got to guard it. And don't let nobody talk you out of it. Don't let no thief come in and try to steal it from you. Don't let nobody try to tell you differently. You've got to guard, man, what God has deposited in your spirit. Because that's a treasure that God has given you. You've got to guard it. A lot of people give it away so easy. By listening to people that, that ain't right, first of all. They ain't right, first of all. They're trying to tear down what God is doing. Saying, you don't got to go to church. You don't got to pray. You don't got to Because they ain't doing none of it. Just take a step back and look at who's telling you that. Look at their life. Come on now. Come on, come on. And we listen to wrong advice and, and very easily give up what God is doing in our life. We trade it in for, for things that are cheap, man. Wow. We're trading gold for 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 powder. Can I hear an somebody? Polvo. Dust. Come on. We gotta guard it. How did they guard it here? How did they guard what God is doing? They guard it with prayer. The Bible says we pray to our God and posted a guard or a watch day and night <clears throat> to meet this need. They guard it with prayer. I like what it says in Luke 18.1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Always pray and not give up. When you stop when you give up in prayer, then you begin to lose what God has given you. Wow. Yeah. And you can't guard it no more because it's spiritual. Yeah. What God is doing is spiritual. And so it needs to be covered with prayer. Is. Yes. Prayer is how you guard it. Come on, come on. we got to guard it with prayer. <clears throat> then we got to guard it by watching over it. Watching over it. Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We gotta guard it by being alert. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Amen. So we gotta guard what God is doing. Don't take the light, you gotta continue to build, and then you gotta guard what God is building in your life. That way you don't have to go back and, and rebuild it again. Amen. There's so many times I see people, they come, God <coughs> does an awesome work in their life, and they grow and, and, and leaps and bounds, and God is doing miracle after miracle, but then they don't guard what God is doing, and they lose it all. Right. And guess what? Then they come back. They, they're gone, and then they come back, and guess what? They've got to build it all up again. That's right. Yeah. You've got to guard it. And then the, the third thing and the last thing, as they were growing, as they were growing, I'm going to have my wife come on up and begin to play the keyboard. Then they were growing. The Bible says there in verse 7, but when Sambalot, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the people of Ashton heard that the repairs to Jerusalem walls had gone ahead and the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. See, the gaps were being closed. In other words, they were growing together. Come on. The gaps begun to get closed in your marriage, in your home, in the church, <coughs> when we grow together. Come on. When we grow together. They were growing two ways here that I saw. They were growing together. The Bible says in Colossians 1.10, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, being fruitful in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. They were growing together. Because if you think about it, when we came to the Lord, <clears throat> before we gave our hearts to God, we grew distant from everybody. Right? I mean, our marriage was broken. Our family was broken. The gaps were represent separation. There was a separation in her. We were separated from God, separated in our marriage, separated 
with our family and friends. And many times we become isolated. Because that's where a place where there's vulnerability, where the enemy could come in any time and just taunt you and torment you and just rob you of everything that you have and make you miserable. But when the gaps start being closed, it's because the people are growing together. And we start growing together as an individual, as a as your family unit within your home and in the church. As the church starts growing together, gaps start to be closed. And the protection begins to rise up. And then God is able to entrust us with more people, more souls, because the kingdom of God is all about souls, man. It's all about reaching people. It's not about gifts and talents and abilities. It's about souls. God loves people. It's all there in John 3, 16, the whole gospel of good news in a nutshell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that none shall perish. None shall perish. That all shall receive eternal life. That's God's heart. It's about souls. It's about people that are hurting. The ones that God loves. And when the church grows together, all the gaps are closed. In other words, the gaps provide an entryway for the enemy. When there's gaps, the enemy can come in. When there's gaps are, 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 are formed because of strife, division, unbelief, doubt. These are all things that form gaps. Lack of commitment. Not wanting to be committed to God. Not wanting to be committed in your marriage. Not wanting to be committed to, to, to the church where you're at, where God planted you. All these things form gaps. It separates. But these people were growing together. Because you've got to look at the condition that they were in when Nehemiah went there. The Bible says that they were all laid in the rubble. In other words, they were tore up. They were laid with all the... All the, all the stones that were on the wall that were, and the gates that were burned, they were laying in there. They had no motivation. They had no will to work. They were just waiting to die until the man of God showed up and began to tell him about the hand of God that was on his life and the favor that the king had given him. And he began to preach that they were going to rebuild the walls and they all rose up. And what happened? They came together. Amen. They did it together. They came together. What stops the church from being the hand of God, from being the extension of God's love and God's grace is when the church don't stand together. When we don't stand together and we just make the church a social club or a meeting place, just come and just to, you know, so we can ease our conscience so we don't have no conviction and so we can just feel good about ourselves. We come to church and then we're gone. There's no fellowship. You don't know anybody. You just come and right after the call, you're like, a, man, you're gone. Phew. And no, no growing together. And then you feel so lonely. You feel so disconnected. Yeah, you don't be I don't I don't I don't feel a part of it. Because you never have grown together with the church. It's when we begin to grow together, things begin to happen. <clears throat> and as they were growing together, there was something else that took place. Then they begin to grow up. Because their position before the man of God came, they were on the ground. You know, they looked like a tweaker. Can I even this <laughs> They're tore up, brother, after a four days run. You know, laying down. Because they were among the rocks. But the word of God came. They got up. They made a decision. They made a choice to let it start rebuilding. They got together. <coughs> they were growing together. And then the second thing, they grew up. They got up. They got up. You grow up when you grow together. When we come together, that's when you grow up. Because now 
You, you're not in just your own little world where you have control and you're able to control everything and you know, you're there. And that's very immature because you're thinking you're so smart, but yet uh, you're just a legend in your own mind. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Nobody don't even know you. Of course, anybody can be a legend in their own mind if you're not around people. But then when you go together, then you begin to grow up. You learn how to get along with people. You learn how to humble yourself. You begin to grow up in the things of God. When you're away from everybody, you don't grow up. And so you don't grow up, so you're not willing to work. You don't labor. But when you grow, when you get together, you grow together, and you grow up, then you're willing to work. Amen. That's what I see. That's the process. And it happened here. And it reminds me when Paul told the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, it means Paul had to grow up. Paul so wrote here, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away the childhood or the child ways behind me. Paul had to understand the process of growing up. That he had to put his reasoning, his childlike reasoning, and his the way of thinking, the way he talked. He had to put it aside and he had to grow up. They were growing and they grew up. They grew up from a place of being feeble-minded, a place where they lied in the rubbles to a place of a position actually building and restoring something that was valuable in the eyes of God. And that was the city of Jerusalem. That's what God wants to do with us. He wants to use us to restore things. There's so many gaps within many of our lives so many gaps within relationships, so many gaps within your heart, within your heart, and that gap represents access for the enemy to keep coming in and up, just torment you and just taunt you and mess with you any which way he can and keep you down there like they were when they were in the rubble, laying there, ineffective, null, void, yet there's so much potential in them because that they were the people of God, they were the people of Israel. The apple of God's eye, man, the one that God loved. The nation of Israel, God's chosen people. That God wanted to bless, that God wanted to cover, that God wanted to do great and mighty things through them. And that's what happens with us. As we all stand to our feet this morning. I want to thank everybody for listening to me while my, my voice, I know it sounds kind of weird. But there's a message behind everything that I'm saying right now. Amen. I believe that today, as we get ready to, by this time next week, we'll be in a new year. We'll be in a new year. I think James mentioned that. A new, a new year is like turning a new page. And blah. Wow, 2015, it was good. We made it. We survived. Man, let me close this sucker. Man, let me close this page. Let me look to 2016. A fresh start. This is the last Sunday service we're having in 2015. And I think we need to refocus. We talked about that on Wednesday. And the focus that we got to do is in our building, our garden, and our growing. Are we building what God calls us to build? Are we building what we want to build? Are we actually guarding the things that God is doing? Are we valuing the things of the world more than what God is doing? And are we really growing? Are we coming together? Are, are you growing? Are you growing spiritually? Are you still sheltering yourself? And, you know, putting yourself over here. Being here but not being here. Are you engaging what God wants to do in your life? Are you letting Him have His way? As the worship team makes their way up, as every head is bowed and every eye closed, <coughs> hallelujah. And maybe you're here this morning and maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you, you served God at one time and you gave Him your heart. But 
today you're not, you're not right with God. You're not standing right with God. Well, today it's for you. If you're here today and you say, man, that's me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I need a new start. I want to rededicate my life to God. And you know what you need to do this morning. If that's you this morning and you want us to pray with you and you want to give your heart to Jesus for the very first time or you want to rededicate your life, we want to pray with you. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand if there's anybody in this house. Just raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you right there. Anybody else? Just raise your hand. Amen. Can we put down those hands? Maybe you're here today and, and maybe you're th you haven't been building what God had called you to build. You've been building everything else. I believe that 2016 is going to be a year of blessing, but we got to continue to build. Or maybe you haven't been guarding what God has called us to guard. Or you haven't been growing. And whatever whatever area it is this morning, and you're saying, man, that's me. I want to, I want to get this right, man. I want to grow with the way God wants me to grow. I want to, I want to guard. I want to cherish those, those miracles that God does in my life. And I want to continue to build. And if that's you this morning, as I get ready to sing, if that's you, I want you to come up. I want you to, I want to pray with you. 